Hello, I'm Rainer Tim from Lund University in Sweden. And in this presentation, I want to show you what we can learn from surfaces of semiconductor nanowires and nanowire devices. Here in Lund, we have a strong focus on nanowires. And with that, we mean a single crystalline rods with diameters between 20 and 200 nanometers and a length of up to several micrometers. And here we make them of alloys of elements from the third and fifth column of the periodic, system, periodic table. And with this, we work on a large range of scientific and tec technological questions, ranging from, um, from fundamental quantum physics questions uh, up to medical interaction, but also with a large focus on electronic and optoelectronic applications, as for example, transistors, where we can, can make use of the geometry of the nanowire as we get a gate all around technology where we have a, have a high electrostatic control on the semiconductor channel material and there we can make use of the high charge carrier mobility of three five semiconductors or we can also use optoelectronic devices like solar cells made of nanowires where we can use the strong light absorption of the nanowires which act as antennas and also the small footprint of these materials where it's possible to stack different 3-5 semiconductors on top of each other, enabling tandem solar cells with different band gaps, or even to grow them epitaxially directly onto cheap silicon substrates. But for all these applications, we need to take care of the surface. Surface needs to be passivated, we need to avoid defects at the surfaces, and especially we have a very large ratio of surface to volume. And if we consider that surface effects easily penetrate several tens of nanometers into the material, all our device suddenly consists of, of surface. It's surface chemistry, it's contacts at the surface and so on. So we really need to characterize what's going on at the surface. And this is usually done with scanning tunneling microscopy, but typically STM is used on nice and flat two-dimensional surfaces. And here we have more or less the opposite as we have these, these high aspect ratio nanowires. So what do we need to do? We need to break these nanowires off the growth substrate, deposit them onto another suitable substrate, so then we can take our STM tip, climb on top of this nanowire until we reach the, the surface facet of the nanowire, and then we can scan along this, as you can see in this image here, which is an AFM image. And we also need to take care of the native oxide and remove it, which we usually do by annealing our 3,5 material in atomic hydrogen. If this works well, then we can get nice images like this here of nanowire grown in this direction. And here are examples that we succeed in cleaning different type of 3-5 materials more or less well. You see some small patches of surface oxide left here, for example, on the indium phosphide. But more exciting than these homogeneous surfaces are, of course, heterostructures. And one very specific heterostructure for nanowires, for 3-5 semiconductor nanowires, is different crystal phase. Because usually these three, five semiconductors grow in a cubic zinc blender phase, but only on these nanowires, they can grow either in zinc blender or in a hexagonal wartzite phase. And the growth experts, experts nowadays can tune this and can grow for us tailored nanowires where we have uh, uh, zinc blender, wartzite, zinc blender, wartzite, zinc blender areas, and so on. So we can take our STM tip, move along the nanowire, and come from one area, this here is wartzite. 1O minus 1O surface to another area. This is the well known zinc blender 110. And again, to a different type of wartzite surface, 11 minus 2, in this example here. And if we have individual areas here, even more exciting is what happens at the interface between them, as in this example here, where we can move. This is the growth direction of the nanowire, where we can move with our STM tip from a wartzite area across this interface, which is perfectly smooth, to a zinc blender segment and again to the wartzite segment. And in this case, we are lucky, we can even go across this 30 degree edge at the, at the side of angle of the nanowire and go to the side facet. You can see that some facets are more smooth, others are a bit more rough. And we also have some, some STM artifacts here, like a double tip, we have some contamination. So that's a realistic STM image, what we have here. In addition to imaging, in addition to imaging, in addition to the atomic scale structure, we can combine this to electronic properties. And this we do typically by using scanning tunneling spectroscopy, where we can map the local density of states locally at the position of our STM tip. And if we have such an interface here, like in this case between a zinc blender and wartzite 
uh, segment, we use the same tip under the same conditions on the one segment and on the other segment. So we can directly compare the elders, uh, the electronic properties of these two segments. As is uh, done here in this, these two spectra that we get, spectra of the differential conductivity of our surface. And you can see here that the valence band offset here shifts a bit between the, the wood side segment and the zinc blender segment. Same for the conduction band offset. So if we plot the band alignment from this data, we see that the wood side segment of this gallium arsenide nanowire has a slightly larger band gap than the zinc blender segment. And in addition, there is an offset between the bands, the so-called type two band alignment, which is uh, important if we think of transport uh, properties of these nanowires for electrons need to, to overcome this potential barrier here. So this is an example of electronic properties between larger segments. Can we even image them? Can we map them even for very small scale, uh, segments, very small areas in the nanowire? And this here, an example of the smallest possible heterostructure that we can have. This is a, a side facet here, a surface of a wood side uh, in your mass night nanowire. Here we go to the, again, 30 degree angle to the side facet. And you can see here slightly, there's a very thin insertion. And this is a um, stacking fault, a sink blender stacking arrangement only at around two monolayers within a wood side matrix, atomic mat uh, crystal matrix around. And this experiment we did at low temperatures where we have high stability, so we can place our STM tip above an atom exactly in the stacking fault, and then <clears throat> with increasing distance away from the stacking fault, and we can take spectra. And we see, independent of how close we come to this different arrangement, we still have the same footprint here of the wood side material, but if we then are exactly at the zinc blender stacking, we also see a different electronic footprint, which is the footprint of the zinc blender. So we have a zinc blender insertion in wood side, even for this, this uh, single stacking fault that we have here. And we can image this with nanometer spatial resolution, uh, even for this electronic properties. And since this is such a small insertion, we can even see the quantum confinement effects of this. If we compare the apparent band gap that we have for a larger segment, so this is a larger zinc blender segment in wood side for this indium arsenide nanowire, for indium arsenide here, we have a kind of flat band conditions of the conduction band. And if we then go to this very small insertion, the single bilayer uh, stacking fault, we see an apparently larger band gap due to quantum confinement here in the balance band area. And another very interesting possibility of this crystal phase heterostructure is that we can use them as a template for overgrowth. In this example here, we have again a gallium arsenide nanowire surface. We have two different segments. It's zinc blended down here, it's wood side up here. And we deposited a small amount of bismuth atoms onto this gallium arsenide surface. So you see here these bright lines that is arsenic atoms and these a bit, bit brighter small dots that is individual bismuth atoms. Uh, if we look at, uh, zoom in further, we see that these bismuth atoms replace arsenic atoms and they are incorporated in the, in the matrix. But this is not the same if we go to a zinc blender or wood side area. We have different type of incorporation and prefer preferential incorporation at the wood side. So if we go to the zinc blender segment, we see some of these bismuth atoms more or less randomly distributed. And okay, they are clustering more towards the step edge here. But if we then go to a wood side segment, we see a very different behavior as here, the, the bismuth atoms like to form islands, two dimensional islands here along such a surface step or some kind of chains here along a surface step in the opposite direction. So we have a kind of self-selective formation of these ordered gallium bismuth surface nanostructures, which you can see in even in a bit more nicer render 3D image here. Okay, let me switch now to a different type of heterostructure and that is doping heterostructures as it is relevant for, for example, solar cells. So we have indium phosphide nanowires here with the bottom part P-doped, the top part N-doped. And if we look at such a nanowire again in the STM and take STS spectra all along the, the transition here from N to P-doped and plot this spectra by spectra here, we can see the band gap, uh, the band alignment and also the transition from the N-doped area here to the P-doped area here. And we see the, the transition regime here, the depletion area at the surface here at least only 
uh, extends over about 50 nanometer. We can plot individual spectra and uh, fit the conduction band and balance band offsets. And from this, we, we find a surface built in potential here. So the potential difference between P and N doped as 0.5 electron volts. We can compare this to a different method, uh, which maybe is a bit easier, more straightforward to look at surface potential that is Kelvin probe, surface, uh, Kelvin probe force microscopy, where we can take an AFM topography image. So you can see that we have a homogeneous flat uh, nanowire here. And in, uh, simultaneously also obtain the Kelvin probe surface potential that we see that we have a transition here in the surface potential when we go from the N type to the P type part. But in this case, here the uh, potential shift only amounts to 0.3 volt, even though it's the same sample as we had before. And the reason is that here with, with AFM, KPFM, the sample is in air, so we have thin oxide and even thin water film on the sample, which pins the, the Fermi level at the surface even stronger, has even stronger surface band bending than in the vacuum case where we, that we have with our STM. Until now, we have only looked at isolated, randomly dispersed nanowires. But we also want to study individually contacted nanowires during device operation. For this, we have to combine our STM with AFM using so-called Q plus tuning fork tip. In this mode, we can start in AFM mode, and we like these two images where you can see the, the electrodes coming to the nanowire, nanowire here, zooming in, you can see it a bit better. Um, in this case, we have a gallium antimonide in your arsenide heterostructure nanowire, you can see an SEM image here. The nice thing is also that we can apply a bias through these, these electrodes and get the IV transport car uh, characteristics of this nanowire, of exactly that one nanowire that we have in our STM chamber and that we're also investigating with STM. Because once we got this overview, once we found the nanowire, we can switch to STM mode and move the STM tip carefully only along these, on top of the conducting nanowire surface and take also STM spectra or, uh, step by step here along the nanowire. This can look like this, for example. So we have spectra here on the Inumarsonite segment and on the gallium timonite segment. However, these have no trace, no sign of a diode behavior, of an Isaki behavior, as we see from the transport, behavior, transport data. But it's the same nanowire. It's exactly the same structure studied simultaneously. So it shows that the surface can, can behave very different than the inside of the same nanowire. In this case, this is due to a, a quaternary, a very thin surface layer all over the structure. But still, also from the STM, STS spectra, we can move along the heterostructure nanowire, go from the gallium antimonide part into the indium arsenide part. At, at the interface, see the uh, depletion region here. And well, which is even more important or more exciting here, we can apply a bias through this external contact to our nanowire and image the material interface. You can see the STM images here where we have the slightly larger gallium antimonide part and the arsenide part. And what we plot here below is the voltage at which we measure lowest current. In other words, the local, the, the position of the local Fermi level. And if we don't apply any external bias, the Fermi level is, is more or less equal all over our structure. But if we apply a backward bias, you can see that the potential drops directly at the material interface. And if we apply a forward bias, the, the interface is conductive and the bias drops instead at that part of the sec or that segment of the nanowire that has a higher ohmic resistance. With this, I want to conclude. I hope I could show you some exciting examples how we can use the scanning tunneling microscope, not only to look at the surface structure of nanowires with atomic resolution, but also to combine this with the local electronic properties, even under applied bias, so doing simple device performance, and also how to modify surface structure. Many people were involved in this work, but doing the actual measurements for, for complementary characterization and for, by providing samples and doing processing of these samples. I want to thank the organizers of this conference for inviting me. I want to thank our funding agencies. And of course, I especially want to thank you for your attendance. Thank you very much.